Hey guys, welcome back to the live stream. It's been a while since we've been able to do this. We missed a week. We uh, we man, we're we're anxious to get this going again. Uh, we had some internet issues last week, <laughs> and uh, we're excited to bring our friends Brian and Brandy from Oso Farm on. Uh, we had this set up. I've been talking with Brian for a couple weeks now, like three weeks probably, and uh, you know talking about it and getting you guys to come on. And we had it all set up for next or for last week. And then uh, a, a rare, it doesn't rain down here in South Texas often. And we got like a thunderstorm come in. And literally an, an hour before the live stream hit, um, we got like hit by lightning really close to the house. And our internet just went completely out and didn't come up back up until like an hour after the live stream would have happened. So um, just some bad luck there. But here we are. We, we, we made it. We had to postpone it. But we've got our friends from Oso Farm on. Um, we're excited to have them on because they're they are fellow youtube creators and they've got a channel that's very similar to ours um they've got a small farm just a little bit north texas from us um kind of outside of waco right yeah just outside of waco yep yep uh so a little bit up 35 highway 35 from us and uh they also have great pyrenees so um just kind of cool to network with them and we we thought it'd be fun to uh change it up for our live stream and and welcome them on and uh, we also have our puppy cams going. You'll notice it's a little bit different this week. The puppies have grown have grown quite a bit, and they are no longer in their whelping boxes. They're out playing all together. Is Millie's litter out? Yes. Okay, so all three litters are out together. Some of them might have been like they might be hiding behind, but you'll see them coming in and out. And you can see, you know, we can kind of like zoom in and show you. It looks like one of them is literally trying to like like chew on the camera. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we messaged our vet because the puppies were starting to get a little restless you know in their like kennels and i said hey um she's gonna come do their puppy checks and then their vaccinations and i was like hey is it okay like can they be together before or do we have to wait till after the vaccines and she was like let them out so <laughs> let them all out and at first they were just like oh and then we kept millie's litter in a little bit longer because they're about five days younger and that five days for puppies makes like a, a big difference, difference in development yeah. so we had initially kind of let them out and they like literally all like made like a little ball and we're like help me mommy <laughs> <laughs> they're so much smaller just that five days makes a big difference but, but hey now I, they're out. yeah hey listen uh if you're you're tuning in right now it looks like we've got like 16 people tuning in right now uh, drop a comment in the comments right now. Let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to give you a shout out. But uh, I want to turn it over to Brian and Brandy for a minute and uh, let you guys just kind of introduce yourself and uh, you know tell us a little bit about Oso Farm. Sure. You want to do that? Sure. Um, so we have 10 children ages 21 to 6, and we moved from Houston two years ago to um, – be closer to family here uh, and we sure i'll help i hear evan <laughs> crying in the background <laughs> yeah so. okay a yeah. little distraction going on around here it's a tough hour sure um, so we moved we moved out here to the country so we call it um, a couple of years ago and we're from houston city folk you know we were in the burbs houses stacked on top of each other and so we okay. got a few acres out here and thought, you know what, let's, let's do something. And so um, the first thing that we did was we got a, a great Pyrenees. And um, a few, min few months later, we got another great Pyrenees. And so I don't think that we initially thought, hey, let's breed puppies. Um, <laughs> we just kind of wanted to do hobby farming and right. um, get some goats and some chickens and start a garden. And um, it just kind of all evolved. And um, this was right when COVID started. Um, we moved at the beginning of COVID. And so, you know, we were homebound anyway. So it was, it was just kind of an opportunity for us to have fun and, you know, see, see some, see some uh, farm life. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, we, we talked about it definitely uh, like during the COVID, you know, the quarantine and lockdown and stuff that, uh, you know, that, that was like shortly after we, you know, we had our first litter January, 2020. Yeah. And we were like, you know, it was kind of a blessing that, mm -hmm. 
you know, we like this was our own like little oasis, mm -hmm. you know, and they we definitely like, spent so much time outside that year. We had a full blown garden. I'm sure you guys do you garden or uh, try? we're working trying. on trying. Yeah. I don't, we have had one zucchini. Well, <laughs> that's actually impressive. Zucchini is like hard to grow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's an ugly zucchini though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm pretty sure that, like growing like early season zucchini and then like it just gets way too hot and it just yeah. all fries. Yeah. So we have all the excuses. Oh, it was overwatered. Oh, it was underwater. Oh, it was in too much sunshine. Oh, it was in too much shade. So we basically have like nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, this, it's like we're like, oh, we'll try again next year. <laughs> first first year for us really, and all of our garden beds are raised beds. Um and we blamed it on the wind. So this year it was really windy Then it's been really dry and now it's 107 degrees outside. So, yes. you know, I mean, you just can't win. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Hey, we got a few comments coming in. So, uh, we've got Christopher or tune in. He said, he's so excited. That's awesome. That's Thanks. Our son in law. Hey, Chris. Okay, there you go. Hey, hey, you Emma. Yeah. He better be excited. That's right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Audra is saying love Oso Farm. Is that another one of your children? Yep. No, subscriber. Okay, she, there you go. Yeah, she's awesome. always making sweet comments. Hi, Audra. Yeah, she says she's watching from uh, Wisconsin. Love it. That's awesome. I love, mm, I just, love cheese. Is that cheese? It is. Or was that terrible to say? I think now Wisconsin is cheese, <laughs> right? Like it's a, like cheese heads up there, yeah. right? Just like Texas is tumbleweeds. Right. That's true. Exactly. It's true. <laughs> and, not, and, and, and blazing sun. <laughs> but, but that is true right now. Yeah. Let's see. The chaos coordinator said, we are watching from Cyprus. Love the Wilsons big. That's awesome. That's my friend Jen and all her kids. Hey, guys. <laughs> That's awesome. That's fun. And then Nicole said she's watching from church. She's she's somebody that has deposits on two of the uh, puppies that you're seeing right now. So she's super oh, excited. Neat. Yeah, we're doing selections pretty soon. We've got them scheduled for this coming weekend. So. They're going to figure out which ones are theirs very soon. It feels almost like a like a presidential election or something, you know, like <laughs> all the things are lining up and we're just like anxious to see like who's going to win what. That's right. That's right. We got another one of, uh, you know, future homes of our puppy, Stephen Bushold uh, from El Paso tuning in. So that's we awesome. We went to El Paso once and it wasn't a great, a great trip. Our trailer we were towing a truck and the trailer blew. No, towing a car oh, a car so yeah and it's so, the tire blew and then we were stuck on the side of the road and you all wouldn't help us it was like 3 a.m i was like eight and a half months pregnant so we abandoned the u-haul mm. and it was like this whole it was a bad trip. A whole thing yeah. we're like we're gonna charge you eight million dollars and i'm just like no you're not i'm pregnant and i was stuck <laughs> on the side of the road so i don't want to go, go back there it was a bad trip yeah Audrey so we, we just had a gentleman come in from um santa fe uh new mexico yeah and that's right i just assumed that santa fe was so far away and so i looked at it on the map and it's about the same as el paso right yeah isn't it's, it crazy certain points that you get out of texas are like the same amount of hours even though right. they seem like the state that's on the other side seems like so far away in theory right. it's like Texas is just so huge. Yeah, it is. Audra confirmed that uh, Wisconsin is cheese. Oh, good. It's cheese country. I love cheese. <laughs> See, Miss Tanya Wood said, so glad the Wilsons are closer to us now. That's Living my sister. Up. That's awesome. Hey, Toto. <laughs> she see. has a, they have what, five acres? Is that right, Tanya? In um, North Texas in Keller. Okay. She has um, donkeys and chickens. I try to give her one of our Pyrenees every time she comes, but mm -hmm. she hasn't taken one yet. Hmm. Miniature donkey. Yeah. Yeah. I want a mini donkey. Yeah. So yeah. Rachel Ray. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, she wants a mini donkey named Rachel Ray. 
there was a show on like TLC or something. And this lady had all these crazy animals and stuff, and the donkey kept escaping. And she went out in the front yard, and she's like, "Rachel Ray," and just the way she <laughs> said it, I'm just like, I want to be able to say that. So we're <laughs> a donkey terrible. or a dog, and I'm gonna name it Rachel Ray. That's terrible. You actually had a crush on Rachel Ray, right? I when did. we were dating. Oh wow! <laughs> oh, wow! Sorry. <laughs> I don't remember that. Maybe it was the cooking. I, I think I it was the food. The food. That should like have been the off topic. Yeah. What's weird is she kind of took a turn with her like career, and now she just makes dog food. Oh. <laughs> it's true. Look her up. The dog food. <clears throat> yeah, she went from like culinary artist to like making food for dogs. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> no judgment, but. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, we have somebody else tuning in and said, we just had 10 puppies in our first litter and we're wondering if their spots ever change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Too bad we don't have a picture of Meg <coughs> when we brought her home. Or something yeah. Uh, I mean, if you look on our website, willowridgeacres.com and look at like the gallery page, you'll see there's some pictures of May when we first brought her home. Um, and she looks a lot like the puppies that she she had four puppies that have the spots on them you know the the badger markings uh but now you you wouldn't even really be able to tell that she had them um i mean i i've seen great pyrenees that keep their badger markings so mm -hmm. it's definitely possible for them to keep them um but they also tend to fade so um may's pretty much faded completely yeah we had a millie had a litter last year and Luna from her litter had some really light kind of facial, I wouldn't even call them badger mark. It was, it was just like a real mask. light tan, the mm -hmm. lightest color. And it, we're like, oh no, those are gonna fade. Like, and mm -hmm. her owners send us pictures and they're still there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Where it's... we intentionally got Millie so that she would have those marks and then they like disappeared. <laughs> it's kind of hit or miss, but yeah, unfortunately like with, what I've been telling people, you know, that are interested in some of my mate puppies with the badger markings, um, like, let's see, let's, if you zoom in, you can kind of see the one that's on the bottom of the wrestling pile there. Uh, <laughs> that one has the badger markings. Uh, but the people that are interested in the ones with badger markings, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, I can't guarantee that they'll keep them because May didn't keep them. So, but they're super cute as puppies. And I mean, they're cute even when they're all white. So but yeah, it's a toss up. We should do like a vote. Do you like them all white? Do you like them? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here's yeah. another. Yeah. With the badger marks. So One of them we call grumpy. It looks like grumpy cat, but it's a dog. And she's just like, like all the time. <laughs> we, we got another Oso Farm uh, fan tuning in. Said fairly new Oso Farm fan. Loving the videos, family and the puppies. Happy to be here watching awesome. the Oregon. Hi, Lynn. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Stephen. Yeah. Answered our question about, uh, well, not a question, but. A fun fact. Yeah. Stephen told us that uh, El Paso is, how do you pronounce that? Equidistant. Equid, equidistant. Mm -hmm. That's uh, correct. Houston and LA, 12 hours each way. That's crazy. Huh. That's yeah. crazy. We could have just kept going and then gone to the beach instead of turning around and coming back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Brian and Brandy, tell us, um, like, share with us what your experience has been, you know, having, like, uh, you know, your your puppies and, like, where you guys are at with it and, yeah, just. And your yeah. girl <clears throat> mom is, like, inside and outside, is that correct? She wants to be an inside dog, totally. And she sneaks in anytime we open any door. She pushes her way through. That's and. Helpful. They do shed a lot, and I think we're just at a point where we're just embracing mm -hmm. that and sweeping and vacuuming all the time. Um, she sleeps inside every night because we have Apollo, and then now her daughter is out there. We do have a coyote problem, so we like to have mm -hmm. them out, outside. But she's, I don't know if it's just because she's a new mm -hmm. mom and she's exhausted and her babies aren't really nursing anymore. So she just wants to live. I mean, she's lays on the floor and cools off and yeah, she's I, totally potty trained. I don't and know. I, I want her to be inside. Yeah. She she probably doesn't want, want her so much, but because um, she's kind of daddy's girl. 
Um, and Both she's just a, she's yeah. just a good dog. She is. Such a sweetheart. Um, so where we were, you know, when we had our first litter last um, October, and it was an unplanned um, <laughs> litter. We went on vacation in August, yes. um, and so and we came home and found out that she was she was in heat and that um, her and Apollo had um, yes. done the thing. And so, yes. <laughs> um, so we weren't really prepared then for puppies because we wanted to wait until Luna was two. I mean, that was our plan. Um, and so we just, you know, we just kind of handled it and, um, you know, and it I was, think we were in denial. I was in denial until she was visibly, pregnant and like her milk came in because we didn't take her to the vet at that point. Right. Um, Cause I had, you know, talked to the vet about it before and we'd actually had her hips x-rayed prior to, we were going to get her spayed if her hips were not as they should be, cause they can have hip dysplasia and stuff. So we've <clears> had <throat> conversations with the vet about what do we need to do? And she said, really, they just, you know, bring them in when they're three weeks old. So I was in total denial and that was actually a joke because all the kids would be like, mom, of course she's pregnant. Cause I'm like, maybe she's not, Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's not actually going to happen. And, a lot. So, you know, yeah. at, day, at day 30, kind of the halfway point, all the signs start to slow, slowly reveal themselves. Um, did, so, did, did Luna ever like start to like, when she's, when, when you would go, you know, out with her, like, and see her, would she like jump, like, uh, uncharacter uncharacteristically jump up on you no, no she's she not got a feisty though like when apollo yeah. or anybody would come near her she would not growl but she just wouldn't tolerate playtime and stuff yeah. like that when she got big. she became a mama bear yeah. Right? yeah true um and so but that was a good experience i mean we enjoyed it um we have a video of the of her birth and all of the puppies and so we just kind of grew into it um and that's kind of how our family has always operated we just kind of take it as it as it comes sure um and learn as we go um and so you know after that litter was was gone we did keep one um and that's bell um we you know had agreed that you know we're going to wait until you know a couple a couple yes. cycles and then yeah. you know a couple of years really and um and never was, let apollo and luna be together yeah ever unless we were in the backyard yeah and we have a we have apollo that goes into our pasture area and so he's kind of on guard with the chickens and the goats and then she's in our backyard area so there's a fence that divides the two um and we assumed that it was very secure um, cause it's got no climb fence and it's, it's four and a half feet tall. I mean, it was, it was pretty secure. Um, so in February, uh, Luna went into heat again and Apollo learned to climb the fence. Um, so we can leave it at that. Yeah, That's yeah. A good <laughs> so, I think you can figure the rest out. So we didn't plan on this litter either. Um, so we had to, we, we learned and um, knew that we had to do some more perimeter fencings. We put up, we put up a hot wire around the um, pasture. And so Apollo, now he can't get out. Um, and um, he and Luna are separate, but um, you know, so it's just kind of live and learn. So our plan is not to have another litter for a while. Yes. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we, yeah. will, we will see funny how not acrobatic but agile they can become because they're so kind of large that you think oh he's never going to make it over oh, that right. you think about yourself as a human being like i can't climb the fence i don't know if you've climbed a fence lately but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not really that easy. i could when i was younger but <laughs> but until you get that hot wire up there and we put off hot wire and ended up spending I mean, thousands of dollars on our fencing trying mm -hmm. to prevent hot wire because I thought it was mean. Right. But it's the only thing that ended up working for us. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you guys, uh, you guys have how many uh, puppies still available? So we have, we still have six at the house. Um, three are spoken for. We have three girls, three girls available um, waiting on their family. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. And, and, uh, and they're ready to go home at this point. Oh yeah. We're yeah. nine weeks. Um, so we turned 10 weeks on Thursday. Yeah. So any, uh, Willow Ridge acres fans that are tuning in right now, uh, we actually put our, our last available female under deposit just yesterday. So if you're tuning in and you wanted a female puppy, we don't have them for you, but our friends, Brian and Brandy do. <laughs> And they're, and, ready to go. and they're ready to go. So and we don't have any males. So they, <laughs> yep. And we do. That's right. So <laughs> yep. So oh so farm fans, if you're looking for a male, we've got some. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we have uh we've got five available. I've I have a few people that are interested, but um, you know, they're not they're not spoken for until there's a deposit on them. So um, you know, if you're if you're looking for a male puppy. We still have some available. And uh, as soon as we do our selections uh, this coming weekend, we're going to update our website, uh, you know, the, the puppies page on our website to reflect which ones, you know, have been selected. We kind of we've been doing like puppy portraits and it seems to be pretty popular. Um, I feel like a lot of people just want to see like cute puppies. But um, oh, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, you know, once once they're uh, once we know which ones are selected, I'm going to you know kind of do like a little graphic to say like reserved or something over each picture. And then that way you can easily see, you know, which ones are, are still available and stuff. So. I was going to ask you guys, you mentioned you have Apollo out with your chickens and goats. A question that we get quite a lot is, you know, with the chicken it has to do with the chickens and, you know, we work with our dogs mm -hmm. not to chase, not to, you know, play with them, like all that sort of stuff did you guys have to do that or did you just kind of put them out and let not, not with the Apollo. Um, now our young bell, she will at times chase a chicken. Like I'm petrified of our rooster. I so watched one of your videos and saw that. <laughs> so if I run, then she's like, Oh, it's, running chasing chicken time you know so there's things that right. like or if they the rooster will call them it's most I mean, i'm not familiar with chickens at all like we're just getting used to it but he makes this weird like moan and then they all come running so if they if they move quickly then she's still kind of she's a wow. puppy they say pyrenees are puppies till they're over two mm -hmm. so she's never hurt one but she does get them and gets them in her mouth. And then when we say bell and the, the chickens are just kind of stunned. They kind of play well, possum. Yeah. Yeah. Well, They're chickens fine. actually they go into a, uh, they go into that like crouch thing. It's like, it's the same thing that they do when like a rooster is trying to like top them. Gotcha. And that's what they'll do, you know, when a, uh, when the dog's trying to get them too. So they just kind of like, yeah. Yeah. So Apollo, so, you know, we got our Pyrenees first. I think that if we were to do it differently and we would have our chickens first and then bring a puppy into the mix um, so that they would, you know, be raised with the chickens and the goats. But Apollo is just, he's such a gentle giant, really. Um, yeah. He does, he does good with, um, with the chickens. We have turkeys too. So okay. no issues there. What's your, uh, I mean, you'll have to answer this. Like, are you raising the turkeys as like pets or is this like a... No, these are, if it was a, if it was up to Brandy, I think we wouldn't hurt any of our animals, right? But you're not uh, hurting it. Don't say you're hurting them by eating them. These are, these are just uh, those big white turkeys that... Their they, name, I'll just interrupt you. Their names are Happy and what the other ones say. So you are not going to eat them. I'm just so telling that is the, no. their names will tell you that we're eating them this the, Thanksgiving. Happy they're they're Thanksgiving. not heritage. Oh, there you go. Happy Thanksgiving. That's their names. Yeah. But once you name, we named our, a, a friend of ours when we moved here, gift a, the best housewarming gift for here. They gave us chickens that they had raised for a, just under a year so right. they did all that hard work of keeping mm -hmm. them alive and all of that and they gifted us them we well they weren't they them. weren't quite a year they weren't that old yet they weren't some of them weren't laying yet but yeah we named them and I, I think it might be in one of our videos that there was a period of time where we hadn't moved our coop because it was gigantic and it was like this whole undertaking and we tried all this stuff and a raccoon got in and ripped because we didn't have the coop in with the dogs 
Yeah, it ripped their heads off. Oh, all of them? The raccoon killed five of our hens in one night. I don't know. All I know is they had names, and it was devastating. It was oh. some of the oh. hens that we had named. So now yeah. all of our chickens, well, they I don't think have we it. have one or two left. I think we have two left from uh, the original. From the original. Um, but none of the other chickens have names. I will them. not name them. So if one of them gets sick or something, I'm like, you go in the quarantine coop, and if you don't make it, sorry. Name a chicken dinner. I mean, that's – if you name it after food, then you should be good. What? Yeah, I hope none of our viewers right now are, are – this. but, hey, you know, I mean, this it's, farm it's life. It's farm life. You yeah. know, and, um, yeah, like what she said, what you know, when we moved out here, like the housewarming gift we got from those friends of ours, it, you know, had already – they were already living the like hobby farm, small well, farm they life. Had great Pyrenees, and they were the ones that were like, "This is why we got him." Yeah, and yeah. I'm they like, have one named Arthur. Your dog barks a lot. I do not want that. Yeah, yeah. I but for he was sure a, said that. He was the one that they get. They gifted us what we thought was seven hens, mm. and a, a few of them were young. And then uh, about five <laughs> months into it, one of the hens started cockadoodle like, doing. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I was like, what was that? "I was like, that's interesting." <laughs> well, that's that's what happened to us. We we got a, a you know a bunch of chickens from Tractor Supply, yes. and yes. one of them turned out to be a yeah. rooster. And so he's just yeah. he's mean, and he'll become well, chicken dinner. Our rooster was nice. So he stayed. Our original rooster is no longer here. So yeah. he I was very nice. Yeah, he was he was really rough with our hands, and I was like he was like pulling their feathers out and stuff. And uh, I texted my friend and I, I said like, "What's you the return?" Need, you don't need. To <laughs> well, I would, yeah. But I texted him, I said, what's the return policy on this one? And he said, he texted me a picture back of chicken thighs on the grill. Yeah. And he, was like, he said, if you're a really country like me, this is what he'd be. I was like, dang. Yeah, we're not that. Right, chicken. Yeah. He is living in the country somewhere. Yeah, he is. He is. He's living well, in the country. Well, so back, back to our turkeys, you know, they, I think that they're actually bred to become very meat, big. They're meat birds. They're, yeah. And so at right. a certain point, they can't even stand up. They end up breaking That's right. Way. So. Yeah, there's certain breeds of chickens that are the same way that like mm -hmm. if you yeah, it's like actually inhumane if you don't butcher them because they'll they're bred they're, they're that type of bird, that type of chicken mm -hmm. is just going to keep putting on I on weight like and at some point where, they like, they'll HEB, they're like, too <laughs> makes the chicken like in the back like out of something <laughs> and then I eat it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the world I live in. Yeah. yeah. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> He handles all any, we're humane to our, like a chicken was sick and it wasn't going to make it. So we, mm -hmm. he handled the situation. There's a, a humane way to, to, you know, to end their life quickly and without, you know, much but pain. I said all of that to say, like, I would say one of our top questions has to do with, do our dogs attack the yes. chickens and that sort of thing. or no we get asked a lot like how do you in fact like a comment just i think today or yesterday on our channel was how do you uh you know train your your dogs to be good around your chickens mm -hmm. so yeah i think it's in their in their nature um you know we've had other dogs here that their motor is just different um their instinct is different yeah they have and like so, a higher prey drive yeah 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 so and, I just I just don't think the Great Pyrenees is by redirecting her and saying her name or you know whatever technique mm -hmm. you're using for that you're correcting that behavior and right. it's like important that if you do see any of that even it starts at the chasing because that's where it you know yeah. the right. stalking the chase that's where you have to correct it so that mm -hmm. it doesn't escalate further than that mm -hmm. because, I mean we all eat chicken because it tastes. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't ever let Belle alone with the chickens unsupervised yeah. until right. she's earned our trust. And we're on some great Pyrenees like forums, and that tends to be what they they tether yeah. them, where they they're always with. Right. You know, well, like, oh, my six month old ate five chickens, and you're like, would you let your you know your toddler your alone? Your toddler so, yeah. alone with a, a can yeah. of paint. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> some people do. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, we've got uh, a few other comments. Yeah. That's my sister. Another sister. <laughs> hey, Jen. Brandy has a lot of sisters. Are there you, you one? How many are you? One of what? I'm the baby of four girls. Oh. I'm much younger, Jennifer. So are you <laughs> aspiring to be me still? <laughs> That's the big joke between us. 
See I have a sister and we always, when we're together, she's here at our house right now, but when we're together, let's just say we're very close in age and I won't tell you which one of us is older, but we'll ask people just on the spot, which one of us do you think oh, is older? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. Pull up right now and bring her in. <laughs> hey, Brandy just had a birthday a couple days ago. Oh. Which one oh, of us do you no, think is I older? I was going to guess my age. I was like, <laughs> well, not in well. I'm going to guess 29. There it is. Good and guess. holding. Man. Yes. And holding. <laughs> <laughs> we we say that we uh you know at this point we're we we do not celebrate birthdays. We're celebrating the anniversary of our 29th birthday. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> we we got a question here. And and about she actually said earlier that my name is pronounced Lene. Is that Lene? Lene. So Lene says, is it true that Pyrenees are constant barkers, especially when left alone. I would I wouldn't say that they're they, they're not like barkers where they like just they're not just gonna bark just because they're alone. Yeah. They're not, they're they're not like annoying barkers where they're you know they're gonna be left outside and by themselves and they're just gonna like incessantly bark just because they're by themselves. Mm -hmm. They're gonna bark if they perceive a threat, and they they might bark for a while after it to make sure it's gone away. Has that been your guys' experience? Yeah, I mean, so we we have the inside outside um, Luna. When she comes inside, she doesn't bark ever. Um, Belle comes inside and she doesn't bark ever. They don't really bark outside unless um, they see something like a coyote um, or a turtle or, or a turtle. <laughs> they hear something. I mean, it could be yeah. any yeah. kind of predator. So uh, a turtle, um, an armadillo. Mm -hmm. um, a raccoon or a raccoon yeah um or even or, a hawk in yeah, the air hawks. we get the, a ton of, i don't know if y'all have hawks up there we don't have the bad hawks the the worst of all is the um motorcycles so yeah. motorcycles are big predators big time so That's when, a huge they, threat. when they go by apollo just Goes wants, nuts. yeah he, he loses can't, his mind he can't yeah. stand motorcycles our dogs hate the trash man yeah that's the yeah. big bad trash it truck is. oh my gosh and we live in like un. it's not we pick who our trash is i don't know what that's called you know so there's like 10 companies out here so <laughs> almost every day is a trash day and it's just the dogs are just like why are you back again yeah, <laughs> like, like the city out here time. doesn't doesn't yeah. depict yeah. which trash company we have to use yeah so there's like a few different ones that come yeah we know if anybody is anywhere man. near our yeah. property we yeah. we always just say you wouldn't sneak up on our property and we would have no you know no knowledge of somebody being here yep we we got another uh great question here marcia asked a few questions in this at what age do you start training the pups for herding uh do the pups work all day and night do they get rest do you get concerned about extreme heat and cold so, I mean, I would say, um, you know, at what age should we start the training? Um, so we'll start like, you know, the, the puppies, <laughs> well, I've got to like isolate on this is cute. <laughs> oh, <she's licking> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to, and then you see the other ones like in the background, just like sleeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, so our puppies that you see there in there, they're mostly five weeks. Uh, one of the litters is just a few days shy of five weeks. Um, in the next, like, uh, probably at like six, maybe six and a half weeks, the, the puppies that are going to be going to, you know, farms to be livestock guardian dogs, we'll start moving. Yeah, yeah we'll start moving them outside um, into like into our animal area where we have like a dog run, uh, you know, where they can be with our other dogs and with our animals, um, but they're still protected because they're still kind of small, but they're at least exposed to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they can see it, they can smell it. Um, and, you know, that's kind of the first start of the training. So that's, you know, at that, that's, that's what age. And we've got like a dog, a dog house out there for them too. Um, the, to answer that, you know, do the pups work all day and night? Um, so, you know, like our adult, our adult dogs, yeah. I mean, they don't really have like a, uh, set schedule you know they're they kind of just like get in their rest when they can you know when when things are slow 
during the day, if there's nothing going on, they'll you'll find them like crashed out under a tree or in some shade. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing at night. Like if you walk out there and it, it's a nice still night, uh, it's kind of cool. They don't really sleep in their doghouse and they don't even like all sleep together. They almost like spread out throughout mm -hmm. our entire property. And they almost like they, you know, cause we have six of them and they'll almost like spread out and have like different quadrants yeah. and they'll just be laying on the, on the ground underneath the stars. But then if they hear something, they jump up and they alert to it. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of how they, they get their rest. They get it when they can. And I mean, they, they get plenty of rest throughout the day and throughout the night, but then they hear something, they, they jump up to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then, uh, the, you don't, you don't get concerned about the extreme heat and cold. Um, you know, we, I mean, I guess we don't really get extreme cold down here as Texans. We feel like maybe we do sometimes in the winter just because we're not. Our puppies consider <laughs> extreme cold because they can't regulate their temperature, but we make adjustments and then right, they the start puppies. to regulate their temperature pretty early. So, mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you're asking about the pups, um, you know, they're, as you see in there, they're in the, in our garage. I apologize. The floor on the cameras, the floor looks really dirty and it is a garage floor, but we actually clean it. She, she like mopped it with some, uh, antibacterial mopping soap or something, but I was like, honey, it's the garage. But anyway, uh, we're planning on, I want to clean it out after this round of litters and, uh, clean it out and do that. Like nice, like epoxy floor in the garage. It doesn't look so gross, but like I promise you, we, we clean it. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, we don't really get concerned about the extreme heat and cold with the pups because, you know, we have them in like, you know, temperature controlled mm -hmm. space. And, you know, we, when we were, gray hair, um, <laughs> when we were getting our pups, we went and, I mean, you can raise them in barns and all of that sort of thing. We just don't have a barn. And so we have to make do with what we have available to us. So even when it comes to their training, if they were in a barn, they would already really be starting to get ex exposed, having so. more exposure. So we're yeah. in a pretty big hurry to get them out. Um, but knowing that quite a few of our pups, for whatever reason, the last two litters, we noticed a transition to people having them inside. We don't want to have them outside and then move them back in and this back and forth. So we made the decision to keep them in the garage and then we just have open grass area that we take them into here. Um, but I don't know about y'all. Did you guys have your puppies outside and then? So move? we put our puppies out probably, I mean, we have a whelping box that was on the back patio. This, this year it was really hot. It was. So we were, we were kind of moving them because we didn't have the space um, from inside to outside. Um, and then we took them out of the box probably at four weeks because yeah. at that point they're already crawling out. Uh, right. They figure out how to yes. get over. And when you put them in it, they start screaming. Yeah. And mom was with them full time when they were little like that. And yeah. now they're outside overnight with just Belle and Apollo because Luna's, you know, a princess and wants yeah. to be inside now. So they've been, they've done great. They've had the whole run of the backyard they're not with any of our livestock animals but they like the pasture backs up to our backyard so they occasionally a chicken will fly over and they they're not really that well like like yours i mean they're exposed right they noises they're around them they smell them they see them um, we have had some dogs actually get into the pasture squeezing through the tiny holes that the big dogs can't um and so they're they're really curious and adventurous um, and they do the same thing. They just really spread out during the day and, you know, find their space, mm -hmm. but it's been so hot. It has you know, this week. It's supposed to be 107 and I, our, our pups water. are just so dirty, like yeah. covered in mud oh, because, yes. because they, that's how they stay cool. They just get in the water and then, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we saw all of our May litters. It's going to be, you know, tolerable because we had a July, what, July 30th or something last year. And it was insane. And I'm like, I'm never doing that again. Yeah. We have May litters. And with y'all, I mean, y'all aren't far from us. It was over 100 degrees. And you're like, what are we doing? Like, 
I, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'll do this again. Not not this at this time of year. It's just yeah. it's too hard. It's it's hard on us. It's hard on the pups. I'm sure. We but, we're brushing ours a lot. I don't know if y'all brush yours. So our full grown dogs, we're brushing them quite a bit, mm -hmm. and then we keep plenty of water out. And then we have different areas of shade that are available, you know, to them. Mm -hmm. And just we're kind of checking on them to make sure that they're staying hydrated, you know, all of those things. Yeah. They can handle the heat, but you do have to be responsible, you know. That's right. We so even if I was if I was to be we put fans out and I don't know about you, but our dogs won't even go yeah, into the fan area. It's, they would it's just water, mud, and shade. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, the heat the heat would concern me, if anything, not the cold. Yeah, not the cold. Yeah. For the little baby puppies, you know, we lost a puppy to the, the winter one year. Um, but for the adult dogs, not at all. Yeah. When it snowed and ice here and it was like negative, whatever it was, they loved every single minute of it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's good. Our, our next video um, on YouTube coming out, I, I just I almost have it done uh, edited. I just need to spend a little bit more time on it um, is a uh, the subject matter of it is basically like can like it's a question we get a lot is like can uh, Great Pyrenees live in a hot climate like in South Texas uh, so uh, be on the lookout for that hopefully I get it out in the next day or two um, you know on our channel here and you know I kind of share like what we do you know here at Willow Ridge Acres to because you know, our dogs they live outside 24 7 um, Mabel sneaks Mabel's inside every once in a while but <laughs> She comes in and I'll let her like snuggle on the couch with me for a little bit. Or but, our bed. Our yeah. master bedroom is kind of, our house isn't very large. So she just runs, she just full, you know, barges through the front door. I know exactly what you're talking about because she's she right behind you and then she the like, same thing and just and goes just through. Runs, and if you try to close the door, she still has her head like right in the door, <laughs> like, I'm going to win, I'm going to win. <laughs> And she just takes off towards the bedroom and just jumps up on our bed. And we always just say, like, she smiles, like, with her little eyes. And you just see her, like, on the bed, like, ha, ha, ha. Yep, yep. All right, we got another question here. This is a good one. Uh, Stephen Bushold said, broad question. Can you guys talk about indoor Pyrenees, like Great Pyrenees characteristics? Timeline for potty training, uh, learning to not chew furniture, things like that, wherever you want to take it. So Steven is, again, he, uh, he has a uh, deposit down on one of our mails. Uh, so he's probably <laughs> wanting a little bit of advice on what he can expect uh, for an indoor one. I don't remember potty training Luna. Like I know she had accidents as a puppy, but now like this morning, she sleeps on the floor of our room and she literally came and woke me up like just by nudging me and then whimpering that she needed to go to the bathroom so she i think with just time being in, like any other dog she right. figured it out she hasn't had an accident a long yeah. time the chewing i think takes longer for pyrenees my friend jen that the chaos coordinator that commented she yeah. took one of our eden our puppies from our last litter and she's calling me every week saying eden is chewing up this and that and i think they do have a tendency from my experience to chew longer. Like we bought an outdoor wooden, very beautiful farm table that those puppies have, I mean, it's like a chew toy. Well, so I don't, and yeah. we give them things to chew, like a, an actual chew toy. And they do eat, they do eat that, but they also eat everything. I think their favorite thing to chew is, is anything, wood. anything wood. Wood, and wood yeah. Ours, ours too. Yeah. Our back porch has wooden steps we remodeled this house and put brand new wooden wood. steps and we had back and mabel, back and mabel back there. were back yep. there and i'm like what is that and it's like that little extra side is now like the tiniest little no like gnaw the at the <laughs> corner yes. yeah but they really <laughs> didn't chew for a long time it was just like you said the intense chewing on wood you know not just like a toy just the wood so steven you just need to go and like make sure it's not like treated wood i guess that would be bad but just go to like home depot or lowe's and buy you know your puppy like a two by four and just let him chew on that a two by 12. <laughs> there you yeah, go yeah exactly. yeah <laughs> just give him a you know big plate a yeah. big old plank of wood there you go <laughs> 
I think so. If you're gonna Best have a puppy inside, the potty training would be much like any other mm-hmm. yeah. puppy. For us, we actually just had a blue healer puppy, and then before that, we had a blue healer golden retriever mix, and we used the. It's still on there. Um, the bells hanging on the door. And train them to go and, train and like them to like nudge it. So like even to let us know they, when they need to go out. We were gonna take them out. We had them like ring the bell and then take them out. And it's, I mean, if we're just being on, I'll just be honest. Like it's a little annoying now because they will aggressively like nudge <laughs> the bell and then turn and look like, um, excuse me, like I'm ready to go out. And know? if you don't get up and let them out right away, they like do it again and look at you. Like, I heard you the first time, you know, it worked really well for us. So I think, you know, things like that, plenty of toys, actually just got some new toys at Costco today. I'm not going to, I, we haven't fully tested them out yet, but on the two scale, we're not sponsored by Costco. They were a nine out of 10 is what they're Mm -hmm. claiming. So I will let you know. (laughs) I think our blue healer is going to tear it up. She tears like anything with stuffing in it and within an hour, she's got the stuffing ripped out of it. But, but yeah, um, Steven, just to tell you, uh, you know, as far as the timeline for potty training, one of the things we do, like part of our breeding program is that uh, our puppies that are going to be inside dogs, um, we bring them into our house for, you know, as we try to do it for at least a week before they go home to you. Um, that way for, you know, they, we kind of help you get a head start on potty training that way. Um, you know, if we know it's going to be an indoor dog, you know, we don't want it outside with the rest of the puppies that are going to be livestock guardians and it getting used to just peeing and I pooping. I mean, full disclosure, we did outside. that with our first litter. And yeah. they turned out fine, but we try to give, you know, we, we want to set our puppies up for success. So um, it it's a little bit of work for us, you know, for that week to bring, you know, these puppies in our house and they, you know, they'll have some accidents, but we can clean it up. And then it gives, um, you know, gives the puppy a good head start for you and, um, you know, hopefully they, they, they're at least on their way to being, you know, house broke. So. Yes. And Chewy has lots of toys on appearance all the time. <laughs> and Costco. We, we got a, a question asking, what's the best dog name you've ever heard? Picking up our puppy from Oso this week. Mm-hmm. Our children have come up with Squiggle, Franklin, Huckle, and Bumble. I wanted to name a puppy Reba. Reba? Uh Uh-huh. But, I mean, you can come up with, like, all kinds. We prefer, like, human names, I guess. We we tend to, like, the – we lean towards the, like, like more, like, like human person names, but, like, vintage, like, old person names that you don't really hear anymore. I don't know why. We like those names. Millie is our – I like Franklin. Yeah, I would – out of those, I would pick Franklin, too. I thought we'll do, like, the – yeah yeah franklin would fit our our mold of what we do of like a a, a human name that like is like a classic that you don't really hear anymore yeah i can't see the picture i'm I'm assuming that's uh prince ali um so all of our pups this litter were named after disney prince and princesses and so we we had we had a um i guess a bet that uh, whoever picked in the family um the day and the number of pups that were uh, were born got to choose the theme Ooh, and so good. this this theme was uh my emma she won the bet um and so she picked disney princess and princesses we do the bet but there's no prize it's just for the yeah. sake of like, you know i thought of doing that so don't I've, tell our kids that you yeah get yours, uh, <laughs> well I we like, don't have 25 puppies so 10 true. names is a lot easier well, we named our very first litter after The Office because we watched the word. Yeah, we anyway. like to show The Office. And, um, and that, but it made it hard for us to let go of them because they had names and we. Kevin, even though there was a the theme. Names, it was so hard. So now they're just colors and we stick with it. Because I, 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 pro- I actually proposed that idea of like theming yeah. them even with these three litters. I'm like, we can do three different do themes, but I'll, but I agree with her. Like, uh, I mean, we love we love dogs and we love animals so much. Like, we'll get attached to them. So, like, yeah. well, you do. I mean, toys left, and I'm like, well, even without you know, a name, if it ends up being one of Mabel's, because Mabel's gonna get fixed, then we could add him into the breeding program. And Jeff's just like, no. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I would go with Franklin. Franklin. 
Yes, yeah. I agree. Do you guys have like a uh, best dog name you've ever heard? You've ever heard? I mean, we have a dog named Roger. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's legit. Yeah. My dad's yeah. name was Roger. Is he so, the personality? Well. It, no, because my dad was alive at the time and my Emma got Roger as a pet tiny sweet little shih tzu chihuahua mix so when she said i want to name him after papa i want to name him roger we were like well you better go ask papa he may not want a dog named after him and now it's sweet and it's kind of mm. endearing because roger is the most irritating dog ever yeah. he's 17 maybe 16 wow. 17 Jeez. emma got him in kindergarten and she's 21 about to have her second baby and oh, wow. not that we want him to die but he is gonna like outlive us all yes. and all he, he's blind and deaf yes. and just yeah. bark. He, that's why i've been having to get up and leave because he okay. barks yes. incessantly he is the ours, original dog yeah. we had to, to make the decision because he was in pain but he got to the point where he was just like like whining he, won. Like, he just constantly was like <laughs> Aww. But the day yeah, that we, we went to put him down, down, oh, I haven't, I don't know if I've ever even told you this, so you're about to hear this. Um, oh, great. We had scheduled it, and he was deaf and mostly blind, but, like, could probably see a little bit. And he was up in our, he, he slept with our son. He really took care of him. He was 16. And um, the puppy, not the son. <laughs> yeah, the puppy was 16. <laughs> so, we had scheduled it, which was hard. You know, we feel like the Lord like put a squash on it because we actually tried to put him down at Thanksgiving, but our vet's office happened to be closed an extra day. And so it didn't work out. So then fast forward to March or April, we had finally decided he was suffering, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it was time. So he was coming home. My mom actually had to take him. I couldn't even do it because I was just too much. And he was going to meet her there. And I go upstairs to get him to bring him down to tell the kids, you know, to say their goodbyes and stuff. And he was barking at a Pringles can, like <laughs> the incessant barking, like just like he could almost like barely see it, but like, that's how he lived his life. He never stopped barking yes. <laughs> like ever yeah, barked because I think, you know, he was deaf and his, everything was right. just stimulating yeah, him. And right. you're like, you said, you know, you don't want them to die, but you were just like, how you're not living yeah. like a really great life here. You know, yep. Yeah. we would just pray like, Lord, please like <laughs> take him. <I> mean, <laughs> yeah. Yep. We got another great question here. Tina asks, are they aggressive? Can they protect you and your home if you don't have cattle for them to watch? I wouldn't like when people ask me that I answer it like they're not aggressive dogs like a German Shepherd or right. they don't have that, but they will definitely get up in somebody's face and bark um, and protect you that way. They're not going to chew their head off. At least that's not my experience, right? Um, yeah. It's I'm confident like so. Apollo, we have a septic system and they don't come and knock on our door when they come and check it. And so I got frustrated with Apollo because at one point he's just out there laying with the septic guy. And I'm like, you don't know who this man is, but I think. Wagging his tail. Yeah. yeah. It's like I, I, but Apollo is 130 pounds and he barks. So I think he would definitely scare people off. And then I'm confident like if we were in danger, just like yeah. a protector, he would help. But, right. you know, I, their temperament, um, we have a six-year-old son with Down syndrome. And since he was tiny, it took him a lot longer to comprehend like boundaries mm -hmm. for Evan with the dog. And Apollo, like I've never once, you know, worried. And my little grandson yeah. just mm -hmm. climbed up. Luna was asleep on the floor. And he grabbed her tail while well, she was asleep and she barked and it scared, you know, little baby Danny. And right. then we all like, what happened? But anybody would bark if they, you know, if their right. tail was pulled and they were asleep. But she did, once she saw it was Danny, she was like, okay. What do you do when your fine. tail is pulled? <laughs> right. <laughs> so. You know, we I don't ever have any hesitation. You know, that parent feeling that you get with other mm -hmm. dogs. I mean, even yeah. with some of our, you know, we have an old Chawini 
she's not super old. I don't think she's eight or so. But you get that little gut check where you're like, mm, like. Our, it's usually the smaller dogs that will. Our bite eight year old more likes to like grab their faces and go like, nye, 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 nye. and I'm like, <laughs> don't do that to a dog. But like, yeah. he'll do that with the dogs that you know are great Pyrenees, and, and I they, never they say to myself, oh my gosh, don't do that. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Tina, I would explain the, the the best way I can say it is that like a Great Pyrenees is a low liability guard dog. So uh, what I mean by that is that they're not they're not like a guard dog in an aggressive way. They're a guard dog in like they're going to get between you and what they perceive as a threat. They mm -hmm. will absolutely like get between you and the threat and they're going to stand their ground and they're going to bark like crazy. And that's their first line of defense is barking. And for the most part, like like Brandy said, they're they're huge dogs and they have a huge, yeah. like loud commanding bark. So that usually works. But I would say that if if it came to it, that that I'm I'm confident that it, that the dog would stand its ground and you know and fight back if it had if it came to. But that's like its last, like it's the last straw. Right. And right. like, like she's saying, like, they're not like a German shepherd or like a Rottweiler where like right away it's going to like right. boom and like go on the attack. Um, and, and I would also say that like they have like extreme discernment. They're like Great Pyrenees are like very smart and have like really, really good discernment in what is a threat and what's not. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, it, and again, that just kind of goes back to like they're a low liability guard dog because they can really, really discern what's a threat and what's not. And they're not going to like go on that attack unless it absolutely has to happen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. They just bark. Yeah. That's what they do. Or get in between you. We <laughs> yeah. had an AC guy that came out and he was at work, which we rarely ever do. But our AC was out and he pulled his truck in and he even rolled his window down because Monty was outside our rescue Great Pyrenees. And yes. he is huge monty's big and the guy rolled his window down he's like am i gonna be all right with that <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah just pull up there and i'll meet you over there and i walked and he monty literally made a barrier between me and this guy and stood there the entire time he didn't go after this guy nope but he made like a, a made a line, sure like that you're not gonna come over here but you know, I'm going to keep my cool as long as you stay on that side over there. And yeah. he did perfectly fine with him, but he came home from work and I told Jeff, I said, he literally was like resting on my leg and was just like, I'm going to stand right here in between you two. So we, we take Monty for a walk sometimes in our neighborhood. And, uh, you know, there's, we, we live in like a neighborhood that, you know, everybody has like a little bit of property and, you know, all the properties are like fenced you know, completely up to, you know, up to the road. So as you're walking down the road, you know, you're walking along someone's fence line and other people have dogs and you know, there's a, literally like a house down the street that has like a German shepherd. And when we walk Monty, he's like, he's like a dream to walk because you can, we keep him on a leash just cause like, that's what you're supposed to do. But he literally walks right at our side. Like his head is at my legs mm -hmm. and he won't, he won't rush in front of us. He, he, and if we stop, he stops and he doesn't go until we go. But um, as we walk by anybody's property that has a dog, that dog can be running across the property line and barking their head off. Monty doesn't even respond. All yeah. he does is he'll make sure that he gets on the side to be between me and that dog. Mm -hmm. And he and he just walks super confident like nobody's messing with you. Mm -hmm. I got <laughs> it's just difference. I think there's a, dif a differentiation between protective and aggressive. And That's I right. I've never described the mm -hmm. as aggressive, but I would definitely say that it's protective. they're very protective. And, and to answer the other part, they, yes, uh, I mean, they're, they're a guardian dog and, you know, by nature, they're going to guard whatever you put with them. So like, if you put them out in the, in the pasture and they've got goats and they, they have cattle or they have chickens, they're going to make that their flock, their herd, and that's what they're going to protect. Now, if you have them inside, guess what? You are their flock and they're going to protect you. Oh, yeah. Yep. Good stuff. Yep. Yep. We have just a couple other comments real quick. Ashley, this is another uh, person that 
uh, has a deposit on one of our puppies. So I can't wait for puppy selection. I was wondering if y'all could talk about introducing a new puppy to a non livestock guardian farm dog and how much interaction you let them have. I've heard so many different things. I mean, uh, y'all have other. Yeah. I mean, they're these, even though these puppies are going to be 25 pounds when you bring them home, um, right. they're still puppies exactly. and, um, they're, I think that they just see another animal as a friend. Mm -hmm. you yep. know, these, they're just not aggressive. They're very friendly, especially at this age. It's, yeah. it's, uh, they develop that like, flock throughout the first two years. And so you're developing that flock with them and mm -hmm. use the correct introduction, like the smelling and you would never just put a dog like in, you know, just let you got to introduce them. introduction, right. but they're developing that flock. So, you know, yeah. They take really well. To now, you, the other animal, I, you know, we can't speak for. Exactly. So exactly. Um, you, you know your other it. dog much better than than we would. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, when you know, when you bring Ashley, when you bring your puppy home, like Brian said, it's going to be a big puppy. It's going to it's <laughs> going to be big enough to handle its own. But they are, you know, one of the the uh, nicknames for the Great Pyrenees breed is that they're the gentle giant, mm -hmm. and even. They're a gentle giant puppy. Um, they're gonna just come in and just kind of be floofy and, and you know, kind of uncoordinated. uncoordinated a little bit. Like they're a little bit like too big for their body, or I don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and um, and, and they're gonna be a little bit aloof, and they'll come in and sniff. Like they're they're not gonna come in and be aggressive with your other mm -hmm. dog. But you know, I'm not sure what other dog you have that might, that's kind of the, the X factor there is, you know, how your other dog is going to interact with the puppy. I, I wouldn't be concerned at all, uh, bringing the puppy in. So, yep. Well, yeah, we're, we're, we just, uh, got over the hour mark here. So I think that'll be it for the questions and we'll just kind of wrap it up here. And, um, you know, I, I want to thank Brian and, and Brandy for coming on. Do you guys have anything else you wanted to share? <laughs> well, I mean, we just appreciate you guys inviting yeah, us. Um, it was fun. Same. If you're looking for a girl puppy, you know, where we have deposits on all of ours and they have some beautiful puppies. Y'all have a website and everything. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So well, we farm.com. Oh, so farm.com. That's right. Yeah. Check yeah. it out and get yourself a, a girl puppy. Yep. <laughs> a princess. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. A Disney Literally princess. A Disney princess. <laughs> <laughs> Which ones do you have left? What, so what name? It's um, Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Anna, Princess Anna, and um, Aurora, Aurora, like, Aurora yeah, Sleeping Aurora. Beauty. Okay. So I have an unpopular opinion. I like Anna better than Elsa. I think Anna is a, like wow. a frozen. I think she's we actually- We should do an hour on that. Yeah. We could talk that one. <laughs> So I part haven't of it, like, put a whole lot of thought into it, to be honest. <laughs> pair, but, but honestly, part of it, like, I mean, doesn't Anna have red hair? And- Michelle, my wife has red hair, so okay. I'm probably like drawn to that Good a save. little bit. But also, like, <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess this could go down like a rabbit trail real quick. Yeah. But like <laughs> watching Frozen, this sounds really weird as like a 40 year old man like to go this deep. Into it. <laughs> but like watching Frozen, like Elsa's just like, I mean, I guess this is the point of the movie, but she's just like cold. <laughs> <laughs> but she's just like, like she's not like she doesn't even like. I don't know why people are drawn to her. She's kind of stiff and hard to yeah. break barriers. Yeah, I, I, I like feel you. Yeah, <laughs> like she's, ice cold. she's as cold <laughs> as ice. Boy, yes. yes, I feel like Anna's the more like personable. Like, mm. I, I don't know. To me, if like if I had to like choose to be friends with either of them, I'm not like trying to be friends with Elsa. She just seems like she wouldn't. Be hey, like, well, we don't have Elsa uh, available. Yeah, so Elsa's not. Good. She's in New Mexico. Uh, <laughs> she's already been spoken for. Anna is available. Oh All right. Wow. All right. Well, we know what he thinks about his free time. <laughs> yeah. Gonna, with that being said, uh, we're going to sign off here. I'm going to go watch Frozen again. I'm All sure. right. <laughs> well, hey, thank you guys thank for joining us. Thanks it's for having us. Fun. Yes, yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully, um, you know, our, our viewers here tune in again next week. Uh, we're trying to do this once a week. We missed last week just because of some internet issues, but we'll be back next week. And uh, make sure you check out uh, Oso Farm as well. If you haven't already, give them a subscribe. 
uh, they have very similar content. So if you like what we do here, you'll like what they do there. So yes, absolutely. awesome. Well, with that said, you guys have a great, a great evening and we'll see you again soon. Bye. All right. See ya. Bye y'all.